pleasure and honor to be here and join you for the first time at the ACA. Of course, I've heard so much about you through Sheikh Rami and all the great work that you've been doing and really um, making this wonderful institution happen and where the children, inshallah, and the youth that are going to come out of it be from the Salihin and those who will be from the forerunners, if we hope, inshallah, in the community. Inshallah, today I was tasked to speak on the topic of Rahmah and we happen to be, of course, as you know, in the days of Rahmah, of mercy, in these first 10 days of Ramadan. So I hope, inshallah, the last, um, you know, these two days of fasting for everybody and the two days of Taraweeh at home have been going well, though they may be different. Inshallah, we hope we've already been feeling the Rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I can't really, um, you know, I keep reflecting and I have been reflecting, honestly, for the last several weeks since the shelter in place orders have come in and we've all been home, thinking about how um, Allah always has a divine wisdom and plan in everything that he's doing. And that Ramadan would also come under the time of the shelter in place rulings. And SubhanAllah, in really thinking about how the earth outside is healing without us humans being in it much, mashallah. And what does that mean for us at home, spending that time at home, should we not be healing too? Is really been the question I've been reflecting on quite a bit. Certainly all of our teachers, all of our spiritual teachers have been telling us, Alhamdulillah, you have finally been able to sit down in place and connect with your creator, mashallah. So in the work that we do in mental health specifically, we always try to reframe our thinking. So many people have been saying, you know, we miss the masajid, of course we do. We miss the way Ramadan used to be. We miss the taraweeh, we miss the communal iftaris. What is the silver lining then? Because that is what is up to us then to reflect on the wisdom of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has here. A different Ramadan than any other Ramadan. But I would have to say closer to the Ramadan of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his blessed companions. Honestly, this is the most closest Ramadan maybe any of us will get to the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where meals are simplistic, where there isn't all the extra frills, if you will, of the month are essentially taken away involuntarily, right? Allah's like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put this in this place to heal and to really have a different reflection than ever before. And in thinking about rahmah in mercy, you know, where is the mercy in all of this? And maybe it's hard to sometimes see that or fully understand it, but let's reflect together a little bit first, inshallah. There was a, a story about the Prophet وسلم, sitting with the companions um, at the time of a battle. And there had, was a group of women and children during that time. And there was a mother who was, had lost her child in the midst of all of this and was frantically going back and forth, trying to find the child and asking everybody, where was he? And uh, just really frantic about searching for her child. And every time she saw a child, she would think it was hers and she would pick the child up and actually start to feed that child, right? Thinking that this was her own and was really kind of devastated trying to find this child. And so the Prophet ﷺ was observing this. He was seeing this happen in front of him. And he asked his companions next to him, he said, do you ever, would you ever think that this woman would throw her child into the fire? The companions were surprised by the question and they said, no, of course not. I mean, look at how much you know, effort she was doing in, in, in wanting to find this child and missing that child. Put yourself in the moment if you've never, if you have children, perhaps you've once lost them briefly and you know the panic that ensues, right? Um, but put yourself, whether you have children or not, put yourself in the shoes of this mother for a moment who has a lost child and think about her fear and think about how much joy she feels when she finds the child again. And then the Prophet وسلم, said to his companions, right, and taught them, Allah has more rahmah on his servants than this mother has on her child. Right, and that frames the whole discussion of what we're talking about here. Often in English, we translate the word rahmah into mercy. And it's an okay translation, but it doesn't encompass everything that we're trying to speak about here. And in order to talk about the days of Rahmah in Ramadan, we first have to identify what, what is Rahmah according to the Qur'an. And this name that we know of, we say every day in our prayers, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, what does it actually translate to? Well, let's continue, inshallah, with more stories where the Prophet Wasallam is teaching us. Because here you see that if you know the Arabic roots of the word rahmah and you take the root, 
incorporate the three letter root into the word womb or rahm. They're the same letters. And there's no surprise there that the, the word, the womb that holds the child in, in the mother's um, womb and nourishes it and takes care of it. And any woman who's been pregnant, you know that the doctors have said to you, right? Don't worry about the baby. The baby will take from your body everything it needs to grow and be nourished. Worry about sustaining yourself, right? Because the baby will get what it needs. SubhanAllah, that's how Allah has created this womb that nourishes and, and protects and safeguards until the baby is ready to be born. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in a hadith Qudsi on the tongue of the Prophet وسلم, says, I am Ar-Rahman and I created the Rahman, the uterus, right? The womb. And I named it after me. So we see already that that womb is something that comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's his own characteristic of mercy and protection and love for us as human beings. So the very nature, that's the core or the very nature, the essence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's uh, nature. And that's what the womb symbolizes, that nurturing emotional bond. And that's the kind of bond we need to have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that I hope inshallah this Ramadan will help nurture. And if you look in the Quran, there's multiple verses that speak to the word Rahmah. We'll just have time to mention a couple of them, inshallah, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Qul salamun alaykum, inna rabbakum kataba ala nafsihi rahmah. Right? He's explaining and telling the Prophet وسلم, to say, say, peace be upon you. Your Lord has prescribed Rahmah onto himself. And so any of you who does wrong out of ignorance and turns back, and makes amends, asks for forgiveness, that indeed he is forgiving the Rahim. The one, the Rahim is the one who is full of Rahmah. So this month is a month of forgiveness. It's a month unlike any other month of the year, as you know, mashallah, that it has, there are more people who are forgiven in the month of Ramadan than any other month collectively in the entire year. And we have the possibility of entering into this month. Alhamdulillah, Allah has allowed us to balagna Ramadan, right? He allowed us to enter Ramadan. And the, now the prayer should be that we do not exit Ramadan without being fully forgiven and completely immersed in this rahmah that he has, inshallah, for us. And you see that the mothers aren't the only ones that are characterized by rahmah, nor is the womb. The Prophet himself, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there's so many narrations where he is described as being incredibly merciful with his own children, with his grandchildren, right? Kissing them and hugging him. And in and, and one point, Sitana Aisha narrates that she was sitting, uh, narrates a hadith where the Prophet ﷺ was sitting, hugging and kissing and making dua for his grandchildren. And a Bedouin man came in and saw this and he was surprised by it. And he kind of offhandedly sort of, you know, uh, almost like proud of his own self said, you know, um, I have 10 children and I have never hugged any one of them, never kissed any one of them kind of proud of himself, like that this was something to be proud of. And the Prophet Sallallahu in one narration said to him, well, what can I do for you if Allah has removed rahmah from your heart? <laughs> Mashallah. In another narration, he said, you know, um, he who shows no rahmah will not be shown rahmah in the hereafter. Man la yarham, la yurham. Right. And so a clear, just a clear kind of taking away the Jahili or Bedouin or, or non-Islamic culture of not having that kind of affection and closeness to our own children and those who are in our care. This is a school, mashallah. Teachers act in this same capacity too. They are like surrogate parents when the parents aren't there. Same with administrators. I myself went to Islamic school growing up and I have to say there were so many people in that school that affected me my decision to wear hijab, nobody in my family wore hijab. My it was, it was the teachers in that school. My decision to like get excited about the deen and interested had a lot to do with the teachers who were teaching me, the surrogate parents, if you will, right? So there's a very important role that teachers in schools play. And the pro continuing with the Prophet وسلم, there was a time, as you know, probably that um, except for one, all of his children died in his lifetime, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam which is very difficult when you think about that, how much difficulty he endured throughout his lifetime. And he also had grandchildren who were buried in his lifetime. And on one occasion, he was actually burying a granddaughter and he started to tear, cry. And the Sahaba were, again, surprised by this. And they asked him, they asked him, Ya Rasulullah, you, you, your, your eyes filled with tears. 
And he said then, he said the hadith where it says, this is the rahmah that Allah has placed in the hearts of the servants. Explaining to us that this is not a show of weakness or a sign that we are not strong or a sign that we don't believe um, and, and depend on Allah or that we do not um, uh, agree with Allah's decree. No, rather what this is, is actually showing our human natural emotion, right? And this kind of rahmah, Allah has so much more of it than any of us can ever imagine as human beings. And proof of that, for the student who's studying hadith for the first time, um, and the very first lesson in hadith always, traditionally, has been the hadith al-Rahmah. We all cover this hadith when we first study, and it's the very first hadith that you get narrated from your teacher on sanad, right? From teacher to student with the full isnad. And it's the, it's called the hadith of rahmah because basically the hadith says, you know, um, to those who show mercy, the merciful will show mercy. Show mercy to those on earth, those in the heavens will show mercy to you, right? Ar-Rahimuna yarhamuhum ar-Rahman, irham man fil ard, yarhamuka man fil sama. And this is a beautiful hadith when you think about it. For those who are studying knowledge, Islamic traditional sacred knowledge, you often think about, you know, the fiqh and the hadith and the tafsir and the so on. And there's a lot of books and, and rules and haral and haram and rights and wrong and rigidity and so on. The reality is this is a completely not how we actually do this. In fact, the very fact that we start with hadith al-Rahmah then helps us, right? It puts everything else into perspective that whatever you're going to learn, yes, it may be the right rule and it may this might be wrong and that might be correct, halal and haram. However, the way you transfer it must be in a way of Rahmah in accordance to the mercy of the Prophet وسلم, and in the attribute of Allah's own name, Jalla Jalalahu. So here we are in the days of mercy in the month of Ramadan. And we've talked about what is the nature of mercy according to the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu the hadith and according to the Quran. And here are the days where Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala actually gives us ability to, uh, he gives us actions that then engenders that mercy. Fasting in itself is a mercy. It's a mercy because we become more merciful, putting ourselves in the shoes of those who are not able to eat and drink and dress and be in the same situations as we are. And yes, as a humanity, we're all suffering from the current COVID crisis. But subhanAllah, any one of us that has not gone ill this crisis so far, that is a rahmah. And that in itself deserves dua and shukr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on a daily basis, every day that we don't wake up sick. We need to give that shukr. And every day that we hear that our family members or uh, relatives or whoever has gotten well, we need to give that shukr. It's days of mercy. This is also a time where in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted its worship at home, which is blessed. And again, in accordance to the sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, where he only did tarawih twice or three times um, in the masjid and then the rest of his life for the remaining eight years or so of his life, prayed tarawih completely at home as you know, in the seerah. And so here we are imitating the sunnah of the original sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu until we're able to get back to the masajid and pray again in community, in congregation. But until then, this is really a time to really think about this first third of the month and all of the sins that have piled up. All of the people we've wronged, all of the times that we've said things we shouldn't, all the times we've rolled our eyes at our parents, <laughs> all the times that we've done things that really are you know, not in accordance to a life of rahmah, if you will. And with that, I'm just going to end inshallah with a, with a verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really kind of captures this essence of rahmah, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, كُلْ يَعِبَادِ الَّذِينَ أَصْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَتُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ Say, O oh my servants who have transgressed against their own souls, despair not from the mercy of Allah. Indeed, Allah forgives all sins. And truly, he is the most forgiving and the most merciful. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here tells us, you have sinned. We've all sinned. And not only have we sinned, but we've actually transgressed against our souls. And in that, and in that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala still says, despite that, if we were to turn to him, if we were to ask for that forgiveness, if we were to seek him out in these blessed days and hours and minutes, we, would, we have the potential to be fully forgiven and that have the potential to really feel that rahmah. And then once you embody it yourself, you're able to then give it. So remember, you're not able to give something you yourself don't have. 
right? فَقَدْ الشَّيْءِ لَا يَعْطِي Right, so you have to be able to engender that kind of mercy from the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ to then pour it out to all those around you. And I pray, inshallah, that this month is a month of mercy and a month of forgiveness and inshallah, a month that's accepted for me and from you and a month that's blessed for your school and for your students. And that inshallah ta'ala, all of us are written from those who are uh, part of the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and receive his shifa on the Day of Judgment. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala al-hadi Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sallam ajma'in. Barakallahu feekum.